ancient Roman treasure in the Swiss Alps. Someone comes to Switzerland just to relax and have a good time in the mountains, and some people are even luckier. Between the mountain peaks Amatenhorn and Wildstrubel, the traveler accidentally stumble upon a coin sticking out of the ground. As a law-abiding citizen, he immediately turned to archaeologists. During excavations, researchers found many other artifacts here. So far, the team has found 100 coins, 27 small rock crystals, 59 shoes, nails, a brooch, and a fragment of a votive tablet. And all these artifacts date back to Roman rule. The Romans lived throughout the territory of modern Switzerland, but scientists did not expect to find a treasure at an altitude of 2,950 meters. Archaeologists often find coins and small artifacts all over Switzerland, but finding such a huge amount at once, moreover so high, is a rarity. Such a remote location of the treasure suggests that this place could have had a great religious significance. 20 kilometers away is the city of Thun, where the ruins of several Roman temples were found. In one of them, archaeologists found an inscription that mentions female alpine deities. Most likely, the mountains really had a religious significance significance, which is also hinted at by rock crystals found next to coins and jewelry. The treasure hidden during the war and again, an accidental find by an amateur treasure hunter. This time we will go to the Netherlands. A treasure hunter found a magnificent collection of gold jewelry and silver coins in a swamp. So far, they are still being researched, but archaeologists already believe that they are typical of the Friesland region. Museum curators in the Netherlands believe they were hidden there some 800 years ago, possibly during the war. The hoard consists of four gold pendants, two strips of gold leaf and 39 silver over coins. The discovery was made back in 2021 in the small northern town of Hugwood in the West Frisia region. Until now, archaeologists cannot establish the owner of these jewelry and coins, but one thing is clear for sure – they belonged to a very influential and wealthy man of the Middle Ages. It is believed that this was the property of the Countless of Holland. The minted silver coins come in many styles, some from the early 13th century. The newest coin dates from the late 1240s, coinciding with the war period. This explains why the owner buried these valuable things. Hand of Glory Ancient magicians and shamans surprise and amaze with their ingenuity. Especially, their knowledge of human psychology is inspiring. Particularly, besides the fact that they managed to create some magical objects, they also force people to believe in their miraculous power. One such example is the Hand of Glory. The first mention of this terrible contraption dates back to the 1600s, but only the ones officially recorded. To create this magical item, the hand of a hanged murderer was needed. The most interesting thing is that I even have a recipe for making this terrible thing. You can write it down, maybe it will come in handy for you sometime. The hand must be cut off from the body of a hanged criminal, marinated in salt and urine of a man, woman, dog, horse and mare. Then it must be smoked with herbs and hay for a month, hunt on an oak tree for three nights in a row and then hunt on a church door for one night. And if during this time no fear drives you away, the hand will be yours. According to another recipe, the hand had to be marinated in different ingredients, so to speak. Two of them are pony and zimat. Fortunately, we still do not know the translations of the word. So, what is the meaning of this hand? And here, everything is simple. When performing a certain ritual using this hand, you can open absolutely any door on the planet. It's a kind of magical lockpick. Remarkably, history even preserved descriptions of supposedly real cases of the use of such artifacts. In the 1873 book Curious Myth of the Middle Ages, there was a servant girl's story. During a severe storm, a beggar appeared on the threshold of an inn in the English county of Northumberland. There was no room, but he was allowed to spend the night by the fire next to the mate. The woman woke up at night and saw how the guest removed a dry human hand from the folds of his cloak, lit the candles fixed between his fingers and quietly muttered some kind of spell. 
The maid rushed to wake her master and other servants, but they were fast asleep. Then she grabbed. After that, he calmly wandered around the hall, putting more or less valuable things in a bag, dishes, candelabra and others. The maid rushed to wake her master and other servants, but they were fast asleep. Then she grabbed a jug of milk and poured it into her hand. The candles went out and sleep paralysis fell from the inhabitants of the house. Now such hands are part of the expositions of several museums, and each with its sinister story. The next find was already of real value in the Middle Ages. The Ominous Cemetery of the Revenants The next find may scare you a little. In the central part of Italy, archaeologists have excavated in the cemetery. In fact, this is a common practice in the world of archaeology. But not all cemeteries are 1,600 years old, and not all of them are associated with legends about revenants. So in local folklore they called the resin from the graves of the dead. I wanted to say that in ancient times people were more superstitious than in our time, but I would most likely be mistaken. There have always been superstitious people, and human fear has always forced people to commit crazy acts. So in ancient Italy, people believed that the dead could rise from the graves, and so that it doesn't happen, the disease should be buried and a huge stone should be placed on top of him. I talked about a similar find in Denmark in one of my previous videos. So in Italy, in an ancient cemetery, the remains of children were found, his bodies were crushed by stones. Some were buried with stones in their mouth. Archaeologists believe that this was part of some ancient ritual. They believed that the dead could become revenants, we know them better as zombies. Another evidence of this ritual is the remains of puppies, which were brought to the cemetery and buried with the children. Scientists have already managed to conduct a number of studies and concluded that most children died of malaria. And most likely it was this disease that caused fear in people, and it seemed to them that a person could be resurrected. In those days, Christianity was gaining popularity in this region, but this did not stop people from believing in the uprising of the dead. There was a fear of the undead both among pagans and Christians. At the same time, many believed that witches could use revenants for their own selfish purposes. As I understand it, 1500 years ago there were no dull moments in Italy. And the next final story for today will be about a real Thumbelina. 19th century Thumbelina the story began in 1841 in Massachusetts in an ordinary family. A girl was born there, who certainly pleased her parents with an excellent appetite and was completely healthy. But at some point, the parents noticed that something was wrong with this girl. She completely stopped growing. The doctors only shrugged and declared that the girl was absolutely healthy, but most likely she would forever remain the size of a child. Its dimensions were comparable to a child one and a half, two years old. Parents accepted this feature of the girl and raised her as if everything was fine with her. As a child, she planned to become a teacher, but her cousin invited her to participate in the midget show, where she became their queen. She was very popular, she constantly sang and danced. Such a hobby gave her great pleasure and brought her good money. At some point, the famous impresario Phineas Taylor Barnum drew attention to the girl Lavinia. He invited the girl to his place, where she attracted the attention of another midget, who even proposed to her, but Lavinia refused because the guy was seven years younger than her. She gave her hat to another admirer of hers named Charles Stratton. In 1863, the couple got married. The ceremony was attended by former boyfriend George Nutt and the youngest daughter of the Warren family, Millie, who was also born small. Tickets for the ceremony cost $50, and there were about 10,000 guests. After the necessary time, the wife began to appear on the show with the baby. She never said that it was her child, but she did not deny it either. It turned out that all this was a peer of impresario Barnum. That way he warmed up the crowd. Every time they came to another city, he, to put it mildly, rented the child in one of the local shelters, and after the show he gave the child back. Lavinia never got her own child. This was influenced by the case with her younger sister. Little Minnie was even shorter than her sister by 10 centimeters, but she married a taller man. Happiness was not long. A year later, she died from complications during childbirth. Later, Lavinia faced the death of her husband and already wanted to quit her shows, but the accumulated money was not enough for her to meet her old age. She continued her tour and met a new love there. Later, the couple returned to their hometown where they opened their own store. The Queen of Lilliput died in 1919, having lived to the age of 78. Treasure with 1,000 coins 
The story happened in Poland, where a resident named Michal Lotysz, using a metal detector, was looking for parts of a tractor on a farm. However, what he found made him very happy. It was a jug with coins from the 17th century. The treasure was found near the small village of Zaniovka in eastern Poland, not far from the borders with Belarus and Ukraine. Judging by the place of discovery, archaeologists believe that they buried it purposefully around the second half of the 17th century. As I said earlier, the search for ancient artifacts with a metal detector is not allowed in all countries. For example, in Poland, it is considered illegal. Therefore, a local resident immediately turned to archaeologists who have permission to conduct excavations. In total, the jar contained 1,000 copper coins. We often hear that archaeologists find 500 coins, 1,000 and 10,000, but we often do not understand whether this is a lot or not. In this situation, archaeologists were helped by historical documents from the 17th century. Thus, the researchers were able to roughly calculate what could be bought with these coins before. In fact, a jug filled with copper coins is not such a large amount of money. In the 17th century, they could buy two pairs of shoes or perhaps 20 gallons of beer. Emperor with the body of a lion an interesting find was discovered by archaeologists in the temple complex of the goddess Hathor in Dandera, which is 60 kilometers from Luxor. It would seem that finding a sphinx in Egypt is quite easy and thousands of them were found. However, on the face of this sphinx there was a mysterious smile and two dimples can be seen on the cheeks. The face of the limestone statue, as it seemed to scientists, has a clear resemblance to the Roman Emperor Claudius. Emperor Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus ruled from 41 to 54 AD, and under him, the Roman Empire extended including to the territory of North Africa. The mini sphinx, on which traces of yellow and red paint have been preserved, is significantly inferior in size to the famous sphinx from the Giza Valley, which reaches a height of 20 meters and a length of 73 meters. However, in terms of the importance of discovery, it may not be inferior to a giant statue. A mini sphinx was found on the territory of the Temple of the Ancient ancient Egyptian god Horus, which dates back to the Roman era. Now scientists are studying demotic and hieroglyphic inscriptions on a stone slab found near the Sphinx. Archaeologists are hoping to find out if the statue really depicts Emperor Claudius with the body of a lion. Knights of the Order of Saint Lazarus How do we usually imagine medieval crusader knights? Of course, these are courageous, strong, bearded men in dazzlingly shining armor who brandish their powerful and beautiful swords in honor of Christianity. What if I told you that it wasn't like that at all? And the image of strong and healthy warriors is fiction. In fact, they were actually zombies in armor. The Lapa Knights belong to the Order of Saint Lazarus. The story of this terrible army goes like this. In the 12th century, leprosy raged across Europe. A terrible epidemic killed people one after another. And if a man picked up this terrible disease, then there was nothing to do for him but scare naughty children. In those distant times, people did not understand the causes of the disease, but they perfectly understood how infectious it was. Therefore, the people tried to remove the infected person from society so that he would not spread the infection among healthy people. Patients were usually kept in special places, Lapa colonies. One of these Lapa colonies was named after St. Lazarus in Jerusalem. It specialized in former knights. The Templars sent former members of their order there and paid for their accommodation. When the Ottoman horde was at the walls of Jerusalem, the knights decided not to sit back and wait for their death, but to take up arms, put on armor and go to fight. It is clear that such knights could not play the role of a good full-fledged warrior. However, when even half-dead knights in armor come at you and brandish a sword, in any case, this will cause some inconvenience. Therefore, such knights were not only a psychological weapon but also a biological one, because they remarkably infected the army of their enemy. Gurkhas the next story is about the Gurkha army. Although it is hundreds of years old, these warriors still exist and pose a great danger to the enemy. Gurkha history dates back to 1814, when British colonial forces clashed with the city-state of Gurkha during the Anglo-Nepalese War. The small in number of people of the Gurkhas were able to inflict enormous damage on the large English army, which forced the British to sign a peace agreement. After several attempts, the British army was still able to 
defeat the Nepalese in 1816, but the militancy and desperation of the Gurkhas amazed England. They invited the Nepalese militants to serve as volunteers in the Army of the East India Company. Later, they were included in the regular British Army, and in the 19th 20 centuries, the Nepalese participated in all wars on the side of Britain. Known for their curved cookery knives and the motto, better to die than to be a coward, they have earned a reputation for their devotion and extreme bravery under fire. The most interesting thing is that warriors from Nepal are still serving in the British Army. Every year, the UK selects to 200 warriors from nearly 30,000 recruits from Nepalese youth. As you can guess, only the best are chosen. The Graves of the Ancient Riders I talked about the first chariots in the previous video, and in this one, we will find out when mankind mastered horseback riding. Scientists from the University of Helsinki believe that this happened at least 4,300 years ago. The researchers studied more than 217 skeletons from 39 sites. Of these, about 150 belonged to the Yamnaya culture. At least 24 skeletons could have belonged to riders, which could mean that the riding was widespread as early as 3,000 years ago. Riding, as indicated by changes in the skeleton, the places of attachment of muscles to the pelvis and thigh, the shape of the articular head of the hip joint, the generation of the vertebrae due to vertical load, and others. There are six skeletal signs to determine that a horse was used for riding. In one of the great which is 4,300 years old, only four of them were found. It used to be believed that horse riding was mastered by the Yamna culture, which made them the first nomads and allowed them to spread the Proto-Indo-European languages through a large part of Eurasia. However, it is not yet clear what people used horses for. Either it was more convenient to graze cattle or riding horses was a status symbol. But it should not be ruled out that the main use of horseback riding was war. After all, historically it so happened that forced people to come up with new technologies and improve their lives. To improve their fighting qualities on the battlefield, people used horses. In the future, horses helped fix their everyday problems and accelerated the assimilation of new lands. Ancient Skull Comb Today, combs are made from a wide variety of materials – plastic, metal, or wood. But in the Iron Age in England, combs were made from human skulls. At least one such find was discovered by archaeologists during the construction of a highway in Barhill. The comb was found in 2018, but only now scientists have told about the results of their study. At first glance, it seems that there is nothing unusual in it, but the material of its production, to put it mildly, shocked archaeologists. It was a human skull. But scientists did not find traces of use on the comb. This means that they did not comb their hair with a comb, but most likely used it as an amulet. A hole was also found on it, possibly for a thread or rope. Probably the amulet was created from the skull of an important person who was revered in the Iron Age even after death. There is an assumption that these could be the remains of a relative. Interestingly, this is the third such comb found. In the 70s of the last century and in 2000, the same ones were already found and also not far from Bar Hill. Most likely in this region during the Iron Age, this was a common practice. What people did not invent in ancient times to protect themselves from evil spirits. 18 years in prison and 1.2 million pounds fine. In some countries, there are very strict rules for treasure hunters and amateur archaeologists. If, for example, you find a treasure trove or some ancient artifact and do not report it to the government, then you will face a prison or a huge fine. In our story, two treasure hunters received both a prison sentence and a huge fine. So, in 2019, George Powell and Leighton Davis found a treasure in Hertfordshire, approximately 5th century AD. It consisted of a 9th century gold ring, a dragon hat bracelet, a silver bar dating from the 5th century, a crystal pendant and over 300 coins, some of which date back to the reign of King Alfred the Great. The treasure was valued at 3 million pounds. However, historians consider this treasure to be priceless, which, it seems to me, added even more problems to amateur archaeologists. Since 1996, there has been a law in the UK that states that if you find ancient artifacts that are more than 300 years old, even one coin, you must report it to the appropriate authority. When Powell and Davis found the treasure, they decided to sell everything on the black market. They were arrested when they were selling the last batch of jewelry. 
They now face 8 and 10 years respectively plus a 1.2 million pounds fine that they must pay by this spring. If they do not pay, then their term in prison will increase by 4 and 5 years. It would seem that the laws are very harsh, but there is one more fact. If they had immediately told the government about the treasure, then after studying and evaluating the property, the country's authorities would have paid each of them 500,000 pounds sterling. As I understand, these guys were just greedy. Disguised Doors in the Great Wall of China Millions of people visit the Great Wall of China every year, but the researchers continue to study it and find something new. Recently, employees of Tianjin University found 130 camouflage doors. The trick was disappearing or passing through the Chinese wall was demonstrated by the magician David Copperfield, and it turns out there is some truth in that. The doors are so carefully disguised that they are almost invisible from the outside, and if you stand next to the wall and watch, you can see how merchants or soldiers approach the wall and disappear, or on the contrary, appear from nowhere. Previously, this effect was little studied by official history and these doors were not given much attention. To see the hidden passages in the wall, the researchers had to shoot in high resolution. The doors fit so well into the wall that sometimes even the masonry coincided, while the passages were so large that a small herd could pass through. Previously, it was believed that there was no passage in some sections of the wall, but now we understand that there are passages everywhere just somewhere they are carefully disguised. Such cunning passages and the very construction of the wall, 21,000 kilometers long, gave the Chinese a huge advantage in antiquity. Most likely, this is not the last surprise that awaits us while exploring the Great Wall of China. And now, let's go to Italy to a creepy cemetery. Pearl City on the Island on the territory of the United Arab Emirates, archaeologists have made a sensational discovery. In the Persian Gulf on the island of Sinia, researchers have found an ancient pearl city. In the pre-Islamic period in the 6th century, thousands of people lived here. The main occupation of the inhabitants of this city was the collection of pearl shells. Archaeologists have found millions of shells on the island. They still crunch underfoot. On the island, name of which means flashing lights, archaeologists previously discovered an ancient ancient Christian monastery dating back one 1,400 years. The city is located directly south of the monastery and covers an area of about 12 hectares. Archaeologists have unearthed a variety of stone and lime mortar houses here, ranging from cramped quarters to larger houses with patios. In the houses, archaeologists found both scattered small pearls and diving weights, with the help of which divers descended to the seabed holding their breath. Pearl mining flourished until the beginning of the 20th century, but after the First World War, people learned how to extract artificial pearls. Since then, on the island, you can see a million pearl shells that just lay around under your feet. Fresco with Two-Headed Men and again, excavations in Peru, and again, interesting frescoes await us. This time, at the 1,400-year-old archaeological site of Panamarca, archaeologists have discovered frescoes depicting two-faced men holding unusual artifacts. Both frescoes decorating the same column in the main hall have many interesting details. One fresco depicts a man with two faces, holding a fan of feathers in one hand and a goblet from which four hummingbirds drink in the other. The second two-faced, depicted below on the column, holds a moving fan of feathers in one hand and a stick-shaped object in the other, only partially preserved. The people who lived in South America are still little studied. Why the Moche people portrayed these two men in this way remains a mystery. The Mochi built huge temples, performed human sacrifice, and created beautiful works of art out of ceramics and gold. When studying these frescoes, archaeologists were divided into two opinions. Some believe that these were images of ancient deities, others dispute this since the images of deities in Mochi art have non-human aspects such as fangs, animal muzzles, tails or wings of various creatures. Archaeologists have been studying the frescoes in this place for more than 60 years and despite this, most of the hole has not yet been excavated and probably other frescoes are waiting to be discovered. It is still unknown how the Mocha used this hole. This place could hardly be public since the passages in it are very narrow and cramped. Therefore, for the time being, we will wait for further excavations here which will be able to uncover the mystery of the ancient two-headed creatures. Dahomey Amazons 
In Africa, in the Kingdom of Dahomey, there was a tradition that women served in the army. And they didn't just serve, the whole army consisted of Amazon women. There were two reasons why women served in the army. The first is quite normal for a wild patriarchal society. If a woman was a bad wife, then her husband sent her to serve. The second reason is the real lack of male population and the need for an army. The Kingdom of Dahomey, like many others in Africa, was constantly at war. Therefore, the male population of the country was rapidly declining. In this regard, the Dahomey king decided to create a full-fledged army of the Amazons. The Dahomey Amazons studied the art of war with great success. The army numbered up to 6,000 devoted and extremely dangerous ladies, about half of the entire army of Dahomey, and each of them was able to bite up the enemy's family jewels with her own ritually sharpened teeth. It may seem to many that the army of women was the last chance for the existence of the kingdom. However, the cruelty and courage of the Amazons allowed them to be defeated only twice. Throughout their history, the Dahomey and Amazons have won a huge number of battles, and modern men will end their privileges and freedom of action. Women could consume alcohol and tobacco and have up to 50 slaves in their service. For one touch to the Amazon, the only possible penalty was assigned – death. The Amazon corpse was disbanded, but in 1979, the last of them still remembered the hot battles with the French. Army of Ghosts such an army truly existed and was successful. As the saying goes, all is fair in love and war. So in the summer of 1944, the US Army assembled a group of artists, designers, and sound effects experts. Their task was to create an army of ghosts. For this, they used inflatable rubber tanks and jeeps, sound effects, and other tricks to deceive the Germans about the real size and location of the Allied forces. The detachment took part in 17 operations. Such an army could not caused damage, so it was not able to win more than one battle with it. However, participating as part of a real army, it could change the course of hostilities. Artists and illustrators created fake uniforms and car mock-ups. Sound engineers broadcasted a fake radio and created sound effects that mimicked the thunder of military equipment. And actors spread misinformation about the local population in the hope that Nazi spies would fall for it. This army was kept secret for several decades. Given modern technology, you can only imagine how much a real war in the world can differ from what we are allowed to see. Celtic Naked Army Amazons, immortals, ghosts. What about a naked army? Celtic mercenaries participated in the wars against the Romans. Historians have described them as a young man who ran into battle with nothing but a spear, nothing at all. According to the testimony of Polybius, the mercenaries were worried about the thistle, traditional for those places which get entangled in clothes, interfered in a battle, as a result of which they prefer to fight in the buff. I think the modern soldiers are also hindered by equipment, but it's hard for me to imagine a soldier in his right mind going into battle naked. It is clear that such an army could not oppose anything to the armed and trained army of the Roman Empire. In addition to shock and bewilderment, the Romans felt nothing else. On this, the story of the most slow-budget army came to an end, but the following warriors were just as daring, but they already covered their bodies. Roman Sorcerer's Tomb Archaeologists are already difficult to scare and surprise with something, but this find discovered in the ancient city of Sagalasis was an exception. They found an unusual cremation burial, twice sealed and studded with curved nails. People in ancient times thus wanted to save the world of the living from the dead buried here. Who it was and why they tried to hide it even up to death, you will learn further. Sigalysis was found at the end of the 5th century BC, when the region was part of the Achaemenid Empire, and by the 2nd century BC, it had become quite an important urban center of the Hellenistic Kingdom of Pergamon. In 25 BC, Octavian Augustus included it in the Roman province of Galatia, and this was the era of the highest prosperity of the city. The cremation burial was dated to 100-150 AD. The buried was an adult man who was cremated and left on the same fire. Archaeologists also noticed that no one touched that no one touched the charred remains after burning. And this is already becoming interesting, because according to the ancient Roman practice of cremation, the ashes were usually collected in an urn and buried in a grave or placed in a tomb. But even this is not the strangest thing that the 
researchers noticed. Someone scattered 41 bent and twisted nails along the edges of the cremation fire. They could not be used for practical purposes. Their distribution around the perimeter of the fire indicates that the nails were placed there in some particular order. On top of the still smoldering fire, 24 large bricks were tightly laid. Then the bricks were covered with a thick layer of plaster. The result was a rather massive and well-sealed tomb. It is interesting that each of these practices was already met in ancient Rome. Cremation and sealing the grave with bricks and even twisted nails. However, in our story, everything was used in one place. Most likely the buried was a dangerous person during his lifetime. Unfortunately, the remains of the burned man turned out to be unsuitable for DNA analysis. According to the principle of other burials of that period, archaeologists concluded that the buried was an ancient sorcerer. This is what frightened people when the sorcerer was alive and caused such a fear that they decided to conduct a terrible burial ceremony with sealing the grave. Bronze plate in the shape of a hand Let's start with the find discovered in warm Spain. Archaeologists have begun excavations of the hill where the walls of the medieval castle still stand. Near the fortification, they discovered the remains of a 2,000-year-old settlement. The Sertorian Wars took place here, and last year, at the site of destruction, archaeologists discovered a unique bronze plate in the shape of a hand, and the dimensions of the plate were similar to the palm of a person, 14 and a half centimeters. After conducting a study in the laboratory, scientists examined strange inscriptions, divided into four lines. There were 40 symbols in total. When the bronze plate was first discovered, it was mistaken for part of the helmet. At first, neither ornaments nor symbols were visible. After a detailed analysis, the scientists found out the composition of the plate. It is 53% tin, 41% copper, and 2% lead, what was considered the norm for those times. A small notch was drilled in the metal hand for hanging on the front door of the house as a talisman. The first word was Sorianaku, which is easily translated into the modern Basque word Zorianaku, meaning good luck or good omen. The rest of the inscription has not yet been deciphered. This seemingly primitive artifact can actually be attributed to an important archaeological and linguistic discovery. Scientists are sure that people spoke the back language more than 2,000 years ago. If this find did not surprise you, then the next one will definitely amaze you. Drugs during the sacrifice South America's interest in the ancient world is not inferior even to Egypt. The ancient people living here did truly terrifying things. This time, scientists from the USA, Peru, and Poland have found a terrible proof. After conducting a lot of research to accurately verify their guesses, they determined that the ancient Incas before the sacrifices drugged children. In this way, they calmed them before the ritual, which was watched by hundreds and thousands of people, and most likely the parents of their children watched this as well. Archaeologists discovered the remains of two children in the area of the Empata volcano in Peru, and based on their hair and nails, scientists found a small amount of cocaine and the ayahuasca hallucinogen, which is very developed in this region today. At the same time, they are sure that 500 years ago, the Incas used ayahuasca not as a hallucinogen, but to calm children. Scientists believe that the children were well aware of what awaited them in the near future, and voluntarily they would not have agreed to the sacrifices. To do this, the shamans gave them drugs for several weeks, constantly increasing the dosage. This is confirmed by the Spanish colonialists who witnessed this terrible ritual. They wrote that they saw how people were brought to the sacrificial ceremony, and they behaved behaved completely calmly, as if they had been preparing for this all their lives. The Capacacha ritual was a common practice among the ancient Incas. It was only held on special occasions. A victory battle or the birth of a royal son was considered a special occasion. What now seems like something incredible, literally 500-600 years ago, was considered common. To relieve some tension, I will tell you about the one of the oldest trading settlements in Oman. Ancient Trading Settlement 
On the western coast of the Arabian Peninsula in Dawa, there was a complex of five early Bronze Age sites. Archaeologists have been excavating here for 10 years, and during this time, they managed to discover a lot of valuable and interesting finds. Some of them confirmed that an ancient trading settlement was located on this site, and according to a number of analyses, it is the oldest in the world. Archaeological finds include building floor plans, industrial infrastructure, and silver jewelry that tell new stories of ancient trade. The settlement dates back to Am El Nar, which flourished from about 2600 to 2000 BC. Archaeologists have excavated Dawa stone buildings, including warehouses, industrial copper processing centers, administrative offices, and religious houses. All structures are the first of their kind since prehistoric times found in Oman. Researchers found a mass grave nearby. Many local and important pottery and soapstone were found with the remains. For the production of jewelry, silver was delivered from the territory of modern Turkey. This proves that people in Bronze Age were very smart and technologically advanced. More than 4,000 years ago, there were settlements on our planet that were in no way inferior to modern states. Even then, people were thinking hundreds of years ahead, erecting structures and building supply chains. And a little closer to our time in ancient Egypt, people were stigmatized. Prussian Army of Giants Anyone who is fond of military history has at least some collection of military memorabilia at home. Orders and medals, weapons and armor, models of military equipment and archival notes. The first military art collector was the Prussian king Friedrich Wilhelm I. He collected giants and, of course, living ones. The king was so fond of tall guys that he made a whole army of giants out of them. We know that in the 17th and 18th centuries, the average height of a man was much lower than now. Therefore, in those years, a guy taller than 180 centimeters was considered a giant and was an excellent candidate in the army of the Prussian king. It may seem to you that at that time the guy could choose whether to serve or not to serve, but in fact, if you fit the height, then you will be forced to serve in the Prussian army, and if you try to run away, then you will be forced anyway by the same giants. Rumor has it that King Frederick's love for the big guys reached such a level that he created scout detachments that penetrated into other countries and kidnapped tall citizens there. Once on this basis there was an international scandal, such a reconnaissance detachment tried to kidnap a man right from the carriage. But it was not just a tall guy, it was an Austrian ambassador. During the reign of the weird king, the kings of the other countries had the upper hand. If they wanted to pay off the Prussian conqueror, they looked for tall guys among their citizens and sent them as a gift. Peter the Great, for example, who had a strong French with Frederick built diplomatic relations with Prussia through a special selection of Russian giants. Can Frederick force men to marry tall women in order to create a new breed of tall people? It reminds me of something from the history of Germany in the 20th century. Even now in Germany, one can notice the enormous height among the male population. 10,000 Immortals there are two versions of the origin of the name of 10,000 immortal warriors. Due to the fact that this army is already more than 2,000 years old, it would be wrong to assert the veracity of one of the versions. Immortals, one of the most terrible and famous armies of antiquity, it was a 10,000 strong combat detachment. They first appeared in the Achaemenid Empire in the 6th century BC. Herodotus described them as the best and well-equipped soldiers who acted under the command of King Xerxes. 10,000 immortal spear-foot soldiers were capable of defeating armies of enemies superior in numbers and equipment. According to one version, Herodotus confused the Persian words companions and immortals, therefore the Persian army could well be called as 10,000 companions. But another version is more plausible. When one of the total number of foot soldiers died, another warrior took his place and thus the number of immortal 10,000 people was maintained. Such a technique could have a psychological effect on the enemy army. After all, from the outside, the detachment really seemed immortal. How people were stigmatized 
Now you will not surprise anyone with a tattoo on the body, and many tattoos look like a real work of art, although the attitude towards them is completely different for everyone. Even animals today are stigmatized, which indicates their belonging. But in ancient Egypt, tattoos were done to people not at all for the sake of beauty. For a long time, humane researchers wanted to believe that in ancient times only cattle were branded. Historians refused to believe that people were stigmatized to indicate their belonging to a particular slave owner. It sounds too animalistic that just an exhibit in the British Museum indicates that in ancient Egypt, people were still branded without their consent. The ancient stamps located in the museum are too small for cattle, and there is no point in branding small animals. And as history shows, people were perfect for this. In ancient texts, there were reference to the branding of slaves and prisoners of war in Egypt. For example, on the carving of Medine Habu, dating back to 1185 BC found in Luxor, scientists examined red-hot small seals. They were carried in a portable heater. The citizens of Egypt should not have wore it, usually nothing threatened them, but foreign slaves and soldiers in a mandatory manner received the stigma with a red-hot seal. The slave-holding practice in ancient Egypt was similar to serfdom, when the land was sold together with the peasants. Land that consistently yields a crop was sold along with the people who cultivated it, and people lived with this shameful stigma all their lives. Human Skull from Petrolana Cave This unique discovery of a human skull, made in the middle of the last century, has already been forgotten by many. But its discovery can significantly shape the history of the origin of man. Or maybe this is again the same find that historians are trying to turn a blind eye to, so as not to rewrite our history. An interesting incident occurred in 1959 in Greece, where a group of enthusiasts discovered a cave near the village of Petrolona. In addition to ancient stalactites, many interesting finds were found in the cave, confirming the presence of a person here. These are the remains of ancient wood, the wool of extinct animals and tools, but this one find looked pretty creepy and was non-standard. The most important find in the cave was a skull embedded in the rock. Such a find should have been made public. However, Aris Pelianus intervened in this story, and one time he dealt with the topic, the origin of the Greeks. For many, his writings have been controversial and historians have dismissed his evidence. As soon as the doctor found out about the Petrolonian man, as the skull embedded in the rock was called, he immediately went to study it. After analyzing the object, it was possible to prove that this individual really developed developed separately in Europe, and his relatives did not come from Africa. Many scientists immediately challenged the opinion of Aris Polyanus, stating that the skull is about 60,000 and not 750,000 years old, as the doctor claims. However, there was one thing. Scientists conducted a stratigraphic analysis of the cave and deposits, as well as two more skeletons found later, and we are talking about a figure of about 700,000 years. Researchers who have been working on studying the skull have confirmed that it is different from Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, and this contradicts the African theory of the origin of men. There was a large hole in the walls of the Petrolona cave, where various animals fell over the years. A huge mountain of bones and signs of 20 cultural layers were found at this place. In 2012, the doctor was attacked and beaten. He was threatened with death if he continued to speak publicly about his research. And if all this is true, then there is an opinion that we all did not come from one species. Perhaps we would differ in skin color and eye shape not because of evolution, but because of our origin. I better not say too much on this topic and rather tell you about the next find. Viking Silver Stash just north of Stockholm, archaeologists have discovered a once-in-a-lifetime find. In the municipality of Tabin, one of the houses located in the site of an ancient Viking settlement, researchers dug up a ceramic pot with ancient decorations and silver coins. Inside were eight neck rings, two wrist rings, a finger ring, a pair of pearls, and 12 pendants in the form of coins in a linen bag. Most of all, scientists were interested in the neck rings of the Vikings, which were worn by both women and men. 
They were about a thousand years old, but the preservation shocked archaeologists. They looked almost like new, despite the fact that they had been underground for a thousand years. This find is part of a larger find in the site. More than 20 houses and buildings, arrows and rings for amulets were identified here. However, these finds fade against the background of a pot with silver ornaments. Silver treasures are very important. They speak of the wealth of their owner, ancient rulers, their religion and culture. In addition to ornaments, Arab and Norman coins were found in the pot. Everything is clear with silver jewelry. It is not clear why the Vikings stole Anglo-Saxon books. Did they really love to read so much? The Oldest Mummy and the Ruins of an Unknown City in Egypt, archaeologists made two interesting discoveries at once – an unknown city of the era of the Roman Empire and a mummy completely covered in gold. It is currently the oldest mummy found in the country. If you didn't know, it has recently been illegal in Britain to call a mummy. Now it's a mummified person. Therefore, be more tolerant of the mummified personality of Tutankhamun and others, please. The ruins of the ancient city were discovered on the east bank of the Nile, not far from the Luxor. In addition to the buildings, the researchers found metallurgical workshops with various utensils to dovecotes, Roman copper and bronze coins. Approximate age of, of buildings 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, the times of the late Roman Empire. The uniqueness of the city is that usually archaeologists manage to find temples and tombs and here the whole city. But in the Saqqara necropolis near Cairo, archaeologists found a mummy in a limestone sarcophagus which is 4,000 300 years old. At the moment, it is the most complete and oldest mummy found in Egypt. And as we already know, if the mummy is covered with gold, then it did not belong to an ordinary person. The mummy has a name, Gakasheps. In addition to this tomb, four more of about the same age were found. Scientists preliminarily consider that they belong to the highest palace officials, and one of them belongs to a judge and writer named Fatek. In order not to offend mummies, do not forget that these are mummified remains or a mummified person. In recent years, a lot of interesting and fascinating finds have been found in Egypt. In terms of the scale of the discoveries, this is reminiscent of the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun common at the beginning of the last century. All these events will raise the level of tourism in the country to an even greater one. While archaeologists are clearing their finds of sand, I suggest you see the place where the ancient Sumerians ate. Canteen of Ancient Sumerians on the territory of Iraq, in the ancient city of Lagash, archaeologists have found the remains of an ancient public dining room. And more than 5,000 years ago, there was a full-fledged indoor building where chefs prepared a large amount of food and local workers or ordinary residents came here to eat. Maybe it was even free for them. The researchers found something similar to a clay refrigerator, benches, an oven, and the remains of dishes where food was even preserved. Finding the tavern is actually a big discovery. This tells us that there was a middle class of people in this region. In ancient Lagash, in addition to the elite and slaves, there were ordinary hard workers who could come to the tavern after a working day and drink beer with a piece of meat or fish. The area of the city of Lagash is 450 hectares. It was one of the largest settlements in southern Iraq in the 3rd millennium BC. In addition to the dining room, archaeologists found a pottery shop with six ceramic kilns, a residential building that had a kitchen and a bath, and what looked like a shop. Ancient Roman Relief Depicting a God in the north of England, not far from the defensive wall of Hadrian, there was a fortified military camp of Indolanda. It was built back in 85 AD to defend against the Celtic tribes of the Picts and Brigantes from Scotland. The fort existed until the 4th century AD, and at this place, amateur archaeologists found a sculptural relief depicting a naked man with a spear next to a horse or donkey. Archaeologists have been excavating here for more than 100 years, and during this time, they have found thousands of artifacts and the unique ones are exhibited in the British Museum. A few years ago, 25 wooden writing tablets dating back to the 1st 2nd centuries of our era were found there, which are comparable in importance to Novgorod birch bark ladders. 
excellent preservation was achieved thanks to the clay soil. Now you know that sands, clays and swamps are the best places to preserve artifacts. If you want to leave something for your descendants or add work to archaeologists in the future, then bury it in clay, in sand or in a swamp. And we will return to the study of the ancient plate. According to archaeologists, usually when people are depicted naked, this indicates their belonging to the gods. It is not customary to draw an ordinary cavalry warrior next to a horse without pants. This man has a spear in his hands. The spear was the main attribute of the god of war, Mars. However, some features of the head look like wings and this is more like the god of travel, Mercury. The horse and donkey were also often painted next to Mercury. But most of all, archaeologists like to interpret the finds according to the place of their discovery. Near this place was an ancient cavalry barracks. The locals could portray an unknown god who had the characteristics of Mars and Mercury. But if archaeologists fail to find something similar in the future, then this image of a god can be attributed to an artist's mistake. It's good that these amateur archaeologists were not fine like our next heroes, also from Britain. Viking Berserkers I think that many have heard about the Scandinavian Berserkers. This class of warriors was unique and even now there are people who have the nickname Berserk. They were famous for their hysterical rage and wild eyes. They were dressed only in the skins of a bear and a wolf and had high maneuverability and endurance. Once in combat, they killed, raped and plundered with reckless rage. Some Scandinavian sagas even claimed that Berserkers could turn into ferocious beasts. This class of warriors was in demand in the army and as bodyguards. However, they were hated and feared by other Vikings. No one knew what these ferocious warriors were capable of, who could become drunk with their rage and in this state attack their friends and allies. That is, they were powerful, fearless, strong, but absolutely uncontrollable warriors. The secret of their behavior is very simple. It is the use of large amounts of alcohol and psychotropic substances, such as fly agaric. It is believed that these people suffered from epilepsy, mental disorders and had an aggressive heredity. Russian Women's Death Battalion it is no secret that women play a very important role in any war, and their direct participation is invisible to ordinary people. Even soldiers do not always understand how much the beautiful half of humanity is able to influence them and help them win battles. The Amazons, whom I talked about earlier, participated in wars on an equal basis with men. But this story will be a little different. At the height of the First World War, despondency became a big problem for Russia. Constant revolutions and chaos within the country did not allow the people to tune in to a fighting mood. And then Maria Bochkareva, a Siberian with an imperfect biography but a brave and adventurous woman, came to the rescue. She came up with an idea of forming combat strike teams consistent exclusively of soldiers of the fair sex for which she received mutual permission. The task of these women was more propagandistic. They were supposed to inspire men to great deeds, and in another case they shamed men who did not want to fight. Bashkareva's idea was adopted by many women. However, Maria turned out to be very cruel and beat her subordinates. Most of the women refused to take part in the death battalion. Those women who remained successfully guarded the Winter Palace during the October Revolution, and in 1920, Maria Bashkareva was shot, like many ideological people throughout the whole time. Sumerian carts and Egyptian chariots when you see in films or paintings images of the most beautiful chariots and powerful horses, then this is a complete lie. In fact, if it were not for frail and sick horses, then most likely this type of transport would never have appeared. Chariots appeared because of frail horses. Domesticated horses and donkeys in ancient times did not have good and high-quality food in their diet. Therefore, they grew up weak and unable to carry warriors. Chariots were invented for such horses. The design of this transport made it possible to distribute the entire load on the wheels and even a weak horse could pull this. If you dive in the history, then war chariots appeared much earlier than cavalry, but first they were war carts. Archaeologists unearthed the first war carts on the territory of the Sumerians, which were harnessed to four horses because they were so bulky. Archers and javelin throwers fought in the Sumerian war carts. 3,900 years ago, the Sumerians invented the technology of wood bending. Lightweight spoked wheels and 
and bent hulls reduced the weight of the chariot. This technology was later adopted and improved by the ancient Egyptians. 3,800 years ago, Egypt was invaded by the Hyksos. With the help of horse-drawn chariots, the Hyksos conquered Lower Egypt. But over the centuries of occupation, the three Egyptians of the Upper Nile copied unknown technologies and Pharaoh Ahmes I expelled the Hyksos. Later, the Egyptians formed the strongest shock troops from the chariots. Fifty Egyptian chariots formed a squadron, a tactical unit on the battlefield. Squadrons with the loud names Thunderbolt, Lightning, Strike of Osiris were part of the tank regiment of the pharaoh's army. Treasure Hunters these units did not take part in the war. They were not specially trained soldiers and were most likely unarmed. However, they did a very important job. The task of the treasure hunters was very specific and interesting. During active hostilities, they had to go to the front line and prevent historically important works of art from becoming victims of the war. The treasure hunter squad fought in World War II and was made up of art historians, museum curators, and academics. They studied the territory during the Allied invasion of Europe and created special maps so that the pilots avoided these places whenever possible during the bombing. Near the end of the war, the unit's focus shifted to tracking down and recovering priceless paintings and sculptures stolen by the Nazis. When Hitler's regime collapsed, conservationists discovered thousands of works of art hidden in castles and salt mines. Among other things, this unit rescued masterpieces by Rembrandt, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Vermeer, and Botticelli. Most likely such groups exist to this day. During terrible and bloody wars, a huge number of historical objects and artifacts are destroyed, history is rewritten, and people are forced to forget their past. I wish you all a peaceful sky and a great day. Books of Anglo-Saxon England we have often heard about the Dark Ages, but Anglo-Saxon England was not the same as we are told. Their books are considered valuable assets. The first printed books would appear only after a couple of centuries, and therefore, the production of each new book required a huge effort. A team of craftsmen and scribes worked on each book. The production of a new book required a huge amount of labor and time. Therefore, the literature of the Dark Ages has become a symbol of power and wealth. Anglo-Saxon books were highly valued by the Viking invaders. You can read it in the famous Codex Aureus, one of the most sumptuous surviving gospel books from the Anglo-Saxon era. The surviving text of the Code mentions that a noble Saxon family bought it from the great pagan army in the middle of the 9th century. Some of the pages in the book are purple. In Anglo-Saxon times, making purple dye required a painstaking process that involved obtaining ink from sea slugs. It is also highly likely that the manuscript originally had a gold jeweled cover. Thus, you begin to understand the painstaking effort that went into making the book, why it is so attractive to the Vikings, and why the Saxon nobility supposedly paid a huge sum to buy it. Since books became a symbol of wealth and power, the rulers of those times carried books with them even to wars, and later, books began to be given and used as an exchange for other books or jewelry. The book was an ideal gift during diplomatic acts. The only pity is that although books were valued in those days, it was not because of the meaning that it carried, but because of the difficulty of production and high cost. The ship that was able to surprise Sometimes, the forces of nature seem to laugh at us, throw in us new finds that ask a lot of questions. It's good when archaeologists find something and it immediately explains this or that moment in our history. It's good when they find the remains of ancient animals that were missing in the evolutionary chain. But it's much worse when you manage to find something that defies any logic, and when scientists determine the age of an object, it breaks the whole history. A similar story happened after the melting of the glaciers. A couple of years ago, in Naryanmar, Russia, melting glaciers exposed an unusual soil consisting of humus and black soil. The researchers said that in this place there was a riverbed. A ship was found in the middle of this fertile layer. This was a boat or a small ship, about 10 meters long. The wooden parts of the ship were connected with metal nails, and it seems to be nothing out of the ordinary. But this river was navigable about 20,000 years ago, and after the permafrost covered this area, and only now the ice has melted. 
The preliminary age of the nails is 6,000 years, but how then did the ship end up here 20,000 years ago? Where it was built? How it was brought here? To whom it belonged? Why, apart from the ship, nothing else was found nearby? I told you there would be more questions than answers. If you believe the alternative history, then at the time of the Cro-Magnons, there already existed a civilization that could quite easily produce metal products. According to the legends of a semi-mythical people of metallurgists once lived here, here, who knew how to build furnaces, melt various metals, and combine them with each other. It sounds like a fairy tale, but we know that every lie in fiction hides at least a little truth. While we are waiting for new archaeological finds that will help us explain the origin of the old ones, I will tell you a story about a unique person. A person who weighed less than 20 kilograms. Freak shows were very popular in the 19th century. The most unusual and sometimes even strange people were taken there. Unfortunately, almost everyone got there out of desperation. Usually it is difficult for such people to find a job, make friends and even more so a family. And the money in such shows paid good. But the hero of our video did not even think about going there to work if not for a terrible illness. Isaac Sprague, after a severe illness, became practically a walking skeleton. With a height of 186 centimeters, he weighed less than 20 kilograms. However, in order to support his family, he performed in freak shows at fairs. The famous entrepreneur Taylor Barnum gathered a unique troupe of those times. He had a human dog, Siamese twins, and the living skeleton of Isaac Sprague. The guy was born in a normal, healthy family, and until the age of 12, nothing foreshadowed trouble. He had an excellent appetite and good nutrition. But at some point, he began to lose weight catastrophically. He continued to help his father at work, only his strength became less and less. Doctors could not explain the reason for the sharp weight loss. At the end of the adolescence, he lost his parents, he could not work physically. For this, he had to look for non-standard part-time jobs. Once at the fair, Taylor Barnum accidentally noticed him and offered him a job. He was making $80 a week, which is about $1,400 in modern times. After three years, years working for Barnum, he decided to take a break from his career and during this time he made his future wife. Tamara Moore bore him three children who grew up to normal size and had no health problems. The family had to be fat and Sprague had to return to the freak show again. He hated his job. His health was deteriorating and for a while he carried a flask of milk with him to replenish his energy. From complete impotence, he fell asleep on the go. At some point, he was diagnosed with aggressive muscular atrophy, a disease due to which muscle tissue was depleted. When he realized that he did not have long to live, he signed a contract with one university that after death, his body would be opened and studied. After that, his body can be viewed in a museum. For the so-called service, he was to be given $1,000. However, it is not known for sure whether he managed to carry out this deal and how he left for the next world. Prehistoric Ostrich Egg Omelet I have already talked about ancient dinosaur eggs more than once. I spoke about chicken eggs, but how could I miss the most ancient ostrich eggs? Israeli archaeologists found eight ostrich eggs in the sand dunes of Nizana in the Negev. Their age and preservation is amazing from about 4,000 to 7,500 years. If they were kept in the refrigerator, then we would have the opportunity to cook the most ancient ostrich egg omelette. More than 5,000 years ago, there was a camp of ancient nomads. Archaeologists have found flint and stone tools, burnt stones and shards of pottery. But the most important find is ostrich eggs. The dry climate of this region has helped preserve artifacts to this day. Until the 19th century, there were many wild ostriches in this region. It was a natural habitat for them. Ostrich eggs have been an important raw material and food source throughout their existence. Multiple finds testify to this. One ostrich egg replaces 25 chicken eggs. With such an omelette, you can feed a huge family and saturate them with all the useful minerals. It is interesting that archaeologists found a lot of ostrich eggshells, but they did not come across ostrich bones. Most likely, people in ancient times avoided direct contact with ostriches and preferred only stolen eggs for food. This find of eight eggs supports the hypothesis that people deliberately brought eggs here and cooked them on a fire. However, not only sand helps to preserve artifacts in their original form. 
swamp people in Europe. Throughout Europe, archaeologists have found hundreds of mummified people in swamps. The first finds of this kind even scared archaeologists because the preservation of the deceased was amazing. However, later scientists were able to understand how the process of mummification takes place in the marshland. At the same time, the researchers realized that all the people buried in the swamps were victims of ritual murders. Scientists have studied more than a thousand swamp people found throughout Europe. Fragments of skeletons and bones, skin and soft tissues were studied in detail. Forensic experts found traces of cuts and stab wounds on all the remains. Wounds were not inflicted with the intent to quickly kill a person. All injuries were inflicted with a specific purpose. Animal bones and weapons were also found nearby. All this points to ritual killings and offerings. Ritual killings and burials in swamps date back to 5000 BC. At least at the moment these were the oldest finds. Archaeologists found the oldest swamp mummies in Scandinavia. The earliest ones date back to the Middle Ages, but they look more like an accident than a sacrifice. Such a mummification process is considered natural and the most accessible, so to speak. If a person falls into a swamp and drowns, then nature will do everything itself. And next, I will tell you about the mummy more usual in our understanding. Glass Brain a unique find and the only one of its kind was discovered by archaeologists during their excavations in Italy. The eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, it was a disaster for a huge number of people. The Roman cities of Pompeii, Herculaneum, and Stabiae were completely covered with lava and volcanic ash. Archaeologists are still excavating here trying to find something interesting. This time they were lucky. They found a real human glass brain. The thermal energy released during the eruption was 500 times greater than the release during the explosion of the atomic bomb over Hiroshima. The remains of a 25-year-old man from Herculaneum who died in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius were discovered in the 1960s. His his body was found in a small room in the College of Augustus, a structure dedicated to the Emperor Octavian Augustus. The guy's body was on the bed and judging by his posture, he was sleeping at the time of death. To conduct the research and study of ancient artifacts, researchers have to study everything bit by bit. Archaeologists, without hesitation, decided to open the guy's skull and found inside a piece of glass into which the brain had turned. No similar glazing was observed in other parts of the body. The analysis showed that the material in the skull is indeed a human brain. Characteristic fatty acids were found in the glass fragments. They could not get into the skull from the outside. There were no traces of them nearby. According to the child remains of a tree, scientists found that the temperature in this place reached 520 degrees Celsius. The fat in the man's body literally ignited and the soft tissues evaporated. After that, the temperature around it dropped sharply, which led to the glazing of the remains of the brain. Light man turned into a spongy mass, which was also not observed in other remains. Scientists have already seen a similar situation with the lungs in the victims of more modern tragic events, such as the fires in Dresden and Hamburg during World War II. Let's move on from the glass brain to glass tools. Volcanic Glass Stone Axes Ethiopia is a great place for a detailed study of our distant ancestors. On the territory of this country, archaeologists have found many remains of Homo sapiens and their tools. So recently, scientists from the Sapienza University of Rome discovered in Ethiopia a huge treasure of volcanic glass products. In the valley of the Avas River, 575 obsidian artifacts were found. Their approximate age is 1.2 million years. Among the many obsidian objects, 30 stone axes 11 and a half centimeters long were found. Ancient people used them for cutting, scraping, butchering, and digging. Obsidian tools have very sharp cutting edges, but volcanic glass is brittle and difficult to work without breaking. The oldest such tools in Europe were 500,000 years old, and these turn out to be much older. Ancient Neolithic Settlement I completely missed one small country which, due to its geographical location, has a very ancient history. Archaeologists have discovered the oldest settlement in North Macedonia dating back to the early Neolithic. 
Judging by the radiocarbon analysis, the oldest layers of the Vlaho site date back to 6410-6240 BC. Not later than 10th millennium BC, this region, which was called the Fertile Crescent, became famous for a very important event. During this period, a very important moment in the history of mankind began – Neolithization. This is the period when people stopped hunting and gathering and began to grow everything themselves, that is, agriculture and animal breeding appeared. Later, Neolithization began in Turkey, Greece, and throughout the Balkan Peninsula. And 5,000 years ago, the entire continent was already engaged in agriculture and animal breeding. To determine the age of the buildings found here, scientists used accelerator mass spectrometry. For dating, they selected samples of charred grains of cereals. The earliest date obtained showed that the settlement existed around 6410-6240 BC. As you can see, even small grains are important to archaeologists by which they can find out the age of an entire settlement. And the next find is even smaller than grains of cereals, but no less valuable. Ancient Sword Replica an interesting incident occurred in the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, USA. Their museum kept what they thought was a replica of an ancient sword. This Bronze Age weapon was found in the Danube River in Budapest, Hungary, in the 1930s. Hungarian archaeologists visiting this museum in the USA asked to take a closer look at the sword and what they recognized amazed them. The sword was exposed to X-rays to ionize the material it was made from. By measuring the energy and intensity of the X-rays coming out of the material, scientists can find out what it is. In the case of the sword, it has been found to be almost identical to other Bronze Age European swords. It contained a similar content of bronze, copper, and tin. Usually, in this way, archaeologists manage to prove that the artifact turns out to be a fake, and not the original as previously thought. In our case, the study of the sword by archaeologists was shocking. The sword, believed to be a replica, turned out to be almost 3,000 years older than previously thought, but the team of scientists was able to prove this too late, so the weapon will not be shown to visitors in the museum. They want to study it in even more detail in order to understand who it belonged to and how it got there. Researchers believe the sword was placed in the Danube as part of an ancient ritual, perhaps in memory of a lost loved one or a battle. Mystery of the Creepy Little Mermaid Revealed I have already talked about this terrible mermaid several times. On YouTube you could see videos related to this find, but only now the real truth about her has been revealed. Researchers in Japan conducted an in-depth analysis of an artifact kept at the Andrian Temple in the city of Asakuchi. The mummy of an unusual creature, 30 centimeters long, with a scaly fish tail, a human-like head, and two arms, aroused the interest of tourists and scientists from all over the world. Scientists carefully studied its composition and published their results. Japanese mythology differs significantly from Greek and Slavic. I would say that in Japanese, the monsters look more creepy and intimidating, so in Japanese myth, there is a certain creature that lives in the water and it is called Ninio. In fact, these are the same mermaids, only not so beautiful. Hollywood films love to turn the terrible into something beautiful and kind, so they made beautiful mermaids out of Ninio and made kind and romantic pirates out of medieval sea killers and robbers. No one knows how the Ninio mummy got into the Andrian temple, but a handwritten document from 1903 is stored in the same temple, which says that the mermaid was caught in Kochi Prefecture in 1736-1741. In fact, several such specimens are kept in museums in Japan, and only one has been studied in detail today using the most modern equipment. Scientists have used all possible methods to examine the mummy, and now they can say with confidence what it consists of. Typically, such Frankensteins were made from the skeleton of a monkey and a fish, but in our case, the skeleton in the upper part of the body 
was absent. Scans revealed that the object was made of cloth, cotton, and paper coated with a mixture of charcoal and sandpaste. With a mixture of charcoal and sandpaste. The hat is mostly cotton and covered with what looks like a plaster. The hair on the hat is animal hair and the scales are from two kinds of fish. The upper part of the body is covered with the skin of a puffer fish and the lower part is covered with the scales of one of the types of croaker. The fingernails are made from animal horn and the sharp toothed jaw used to belong to some kind of carnivorous fish. Radiocarbon analysis of fish scales show that it was made up to the 1800s. Of course, all this turned out to be fake, and in nature there are no mermaids, no Nino. But this object will not cease to be a valuable exhibit in the museum. In any case, the mummy is made of very high quality and thought out, which is why it was able to survive for 200 years. Scientists drink 2.6 billion year old water. As soon as the world calmed down from the pandemic, scientists decided to conduct a new, unusual experiment. Without hesitation, it seems to me, they decided to taste the water, which is 2.6 billion years old. Water has been preserved from the time when there was not even free oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, and the first multicellular organisms began to appear almost a billion years later. This water was not like we are used to seeing it. It was salty and sticky. Is it really water, though? Water was found in thin cracks in the granite of a Canadian mine. The source was several kilometers below the Earth's surface. Canadian geologist and geochemist Professor Barbara Sherwood Lola decided to taste the oldest water on the planet. She is known for her research on water resources. It's even scary to imagine how much water she tasted in her entire life. According to his statements, the water turned out to be salty, viscous, and having the consistency of light maple syrup. The liquid is extremely salty due to the reaction between water and rock and also has a higher viscosity than tap water. It, is, it also turned orange as minerals begin to form in it. While someone is tasting the viscous liquid of the earth, I will tell you about the oldest skates from China. Treasure of Spices on a Sunken Ship Despite the terrible tragedies and terrible events of the past, archaeologists can now study the ancient world. Off the coast of Sweden, archaeologists have found the ship Grebschenden, which sank here in 1495. The Danish king Johan planned to make a deal with the Swedish ruler Sensor the Elder that would give him complete control over Sweden, as he had previously done with Norway, creating a unified Scandinavian kingdom. However, after landing, the ship caught fire and sank, which was a great loss. It was filled with goods worthy of a rich and powerful ruler. For the first time, the wreckage of the ship was discovered in the 1960s, but then archaeologists were not able to study in detail all the artifacts found deep underwater. The first serious research began in 2019, and the most valuable find were containers with well-preserved plant material containing about 3,000 samples. Scientists were able to identify medieval spices among them. Nutmeg cloves, mustard, dill, saffron, ginger, peppercorns, and almonds. In that era, spices from Southeast Asia were extremely expensive in Europe since the Ottoman Empire blocked the way to them. Also on board were less exotic foods such as dried blackberries, raspberries, grapes, and flax. In addition to them, henbane was found which in the past was used for medicinal purposes, and now it is one of the most poisonous plants in nature. The plant samples were in excellent condition due to the unique conditions at the location where the ship was found, a cold and low salinity part of the Baltic Sea. From precious spices, I will move on to a treasure in a more familiar sense for us. Amateur searchers have found a super treasure. I recently told about one case when amateur archaeologists found a treasure in the UK and instead of telling officials about it and getting a reward, they decided to sell it themselves on the black market. Thus, they paid for it and ended up in prison. In today's story, archaeologists have acted wiser. Treasure hunters found 600 medieval gold and silver coins in Buckinghamshire, which were valued at £150,000. At the moment, this treasure is considered the largest in the UK 
UK in the last decade. The authorities have declared it a national treasure, and amateur archaeologists are now entitled to a good reward. They called it Hambledon Treasure. Usually, the searchers were able to find old cartridges, thimbles, and other small metal objects, but at some point, they found a coin, continued to dig and found another coin, and so on. In four days, they unearthed 627 coins, including 12 ultra rare full gold coins from the Black Death era. During the excavations, the men took took turns sleeping in a tent near the pit so that random passers-by would not take the booty. The owner of the territory where the treasure was discovered will also receive a small of the reward from the government. Ancient Roman Dildo this find was discovered back in 1992, and for some reason, then it was not possible to immediately determine what it is. As a result, 30 years later, archaeologists and scientists again decided to study this artifact, which was discovered in the ancient Roman fortified military camp of Vendelanda. It turned out to be the oldest Roman toy for adults. We know from Greek and Roman poetry, Greek and Roman art, that they used dildos. But until that time, archaeologists had not found a single example. After analysis, using a 3D scan of the object, it was found that both ends were smooth compared to the rest of the object. It was previously believed that the artifact was a darning tool, or it was used as a pestle to grind ingredients during cooking or medical procedures. Scientists also recall that in ancient times, phallic-shaped objects were often used to scare away evil spirits. The researchers hope that the find from Vendelanza will serve as an impetus to search for similar items in other collections. In the meantime, it is on display at the Vendelanza Museum. The Blue Lotus Mystery there are legends about this beautiful flower, and it grows only in the rivers and lakes of Africa and Asia. The blue lotus, or as it is also called the Egyptian lotus or sacred lotus, has beautiful blue petals and has healing properties. This flower was very popular in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians believed that the water lily helped in wires to the afterlife and communicating with the gods. Also, it is mentioned in the Egyptian Book of the Dead and was considered a symbol of immortality. One of the the reasons why the flower was so popular in ancient times is its ability to influence the mind and behavior of a person, just as it expands the scope of perception. In short, it is a powerful hallucinogen. Any ancient Egyptian priest was familiar with the magical powers of the blue lotus. One of the best known such natural hallucinogens is ayahuasca, which is still used today by the indigenous people of the Amazon and Brazilian shamans when they conduct religious rites. Another huge plus of the blue lotus is that it does not need special care and conditions. In ancient Egypt, medicine, magic, and religion were very closely related to each other. To be honest, although people today have become more educated and no longer so wild, many still believe that diseases can be cured with the help of some kind of magical rituals and completely refuse to visit hospitals. The first mention of this flower, archaeologists noticed in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And after they discovered the Ebus papyrus, where they found almost a thousand different recipes and methods of treatment using the blue lotus. It is a powerful aphrodisiac and was often used by the elite at secret meetings in temples, adding it to sacred wines. Its aroma is so beautiful that on the walls of the tombs you can see images of people who inhale it. The blue lotus can be found in erotic papyruses. Bone skates in China it turns out, 3,500 years ago in China, people were engaged in figure skating. At least they had skates. Archaeologists have discovered many Bronze Age relics in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in northern China. Artifacts date back to the 16th-15th centuries BC. Among the finds were the remains of wooden vehicles, cultural artifacts, and bone skates. A pair of skates made from animal bones is the oldest such find in China and Asia in general. Archaeologists believe that skates were used in the early Bronze Age by the ancestors of modern Mongols. They are made from deer bones and were specially sharpened to create a cutting edge that allowed the wearer to glide across the ice. So far, researchers cannot say for sure for what purposes they were used, for hunting, transport, or something else. In form and material, they are similar to those found in Europe. This suggests that people in the Bronze Age had a huge cultural and technological exchange. Our ancestors traveled thousands of kilometers to exchange goods and technologies. 
In addition to skates, researchers found wooden fragments of an ancient transport at the excavation site. Among them, 11 solid wheels and more than 30 wooden parts, shafts, axles, and other components. Researchers believe that these are parts of wooden carts that were used in the construction of the tomb. The discovery of such artifacts will help archaeologists better understand how migration took place and how knowledge spread over thousands of kilometers. And the next ancient find on the ground surprised our Archaeologists. Mysterious footprint on the ground. Another mysterious find was discovered by archaeologists in Israel in the old city of Jerusalem. In the previously buried massive ditch, the researchers found an engraved handprint on the wall. Scientists carried out excavations near one of the main highways of the city. It is believed that the ditch was dug by the Muslim defenders of the city around the 10th century to strengthen the defenses of the city walls. Archaeologists had no idea that one of the most important city streets was built right over a huge ditch. It is interesting that the ditch was carved directly into the rock. Its width is 10 meters and its depth is from 2 to 7 meters. Archaeologists still cannot understand why the ancient builders left a handprint more than 1,000 years ago. Interestingly, this imprint could belong to some kind of ruler or priest, as well as an ordinary builder with a sense of humor. As we all know, ditches were dug in order to fill them with water. In our case, the ditch was never filled with water. Ancient engineers believed that the size of this barrel would be enough to hold or slow down the enemy. Artifacts from different eras in Germany Searching for objects and treasures with the help of metal detectors is popular all over the world. In some countries, such searches are prohibited. It often happens that newbies are lucky, which happened with one metal detector in northern Germany. He came across an 800-year-old hoard of gold jewelry and silver coins. The treasure was gigantic and tells us about the active trade relations in the area. The hoard consisted of a dozen collection of artifacts, two very high-quality gold earrings set with semi-precious stones, a gold-plated pseudo-coin brooch, two gold-plated rings with tones, a fragment of the ring, a small previously gold-plated perforated disc, a ring brooch, and about 30 silver coins. Archaeologists have been exploring the Schleswig-Holstein region and in particular the city of Haitibu, which has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for decades. Haitibu was destroyed and abandoned around 1066. Prior to that, it was the second largest Scandinavian city and was important to the Vikings between the 8th and 11th centuries. Someone deliberately buried a bag of jewels in this place. The treasure hunter accidentally found a treasure in a place that had previously been studied several times. Archaeologists immediately arrived at the site and excavated. The gold earrings correspond to the traditions of Byzantine jewelers, and the brooch was made from the gold dinner of the Almohads. Silver coins were minted during the time of the Danish king Waldemar II, which indicates that the treasure was buried at least after 1234. Gold bead over 1,600 years old and again, excavations in Jerusalem. A gold bead made by a skilled jeweler over 1,600 years ago was discovered in the Amak Tsurim National Park. The find was discovered by 18-year-old Hillel Feidman, who is in the National Service Park. Archaeologists believe that the bead was part of a bracelet or necklace. The soil was taken from a luxurious building that stood on the pilgrimage road. Judging by the finds made here and shards of overseas ceramics, it can be concluded that a very wealthy family lived here. The value of this find is not only in the material of manufacture, but also in the skill of the ancient jeweler. The technology for the production of such jewelry appeared in Mesopotamia in the 3rd millennium BC. Researchers suggest that the age of the bead may be much older than 1,600 years. The jeweler needed great skill in working with the material in order to carefully connect small balls to each other and not flatten them. To do this, it is important to maintain the correct temperature. Similar jewelry has already been found in Jerusalem, but they were made of silver. The Mystery of the Basil Mummy I already talked about this find in one of my videos, but the story has changed. In 1975, in the Swiss city of Basel, in the Bafasa Church, 
the mummified remains of a woman were found, and to this day it was believed that she died of syphilis. Such conclusions were made by researchers due to the fact that a lot of mercury was found in her body. In the 18th century, syphilis was treated with mercury. Hence, such conclusions were made. But now it was impossible to establish that the woman died from a bacterium unknown to science. The woman's name was Anna Katharina Bishop. She was the wife of a pastor and died in 1787. Using DNA analysis, researchers even identified her descendants. One of them, with a 99% probability, is British politician Boris Johnson. The scientists found a new bacterium that was most abundant in brain tissue, and this correlated with the highest concentration of mercury in the brain. Most likely, the doctor in those years made a wrong diagnosis and treated her for syphilis with mercury, which greatly weakened this woman's body. In addition, she was overweight, had gallstones and other diseases. In the 18th century, it was too humiliating to claim that a wealthy priest's widow had sexually transmitted syphilis. When people of this status died, an obituary was written about them, who the person was during his lifetime, what he did and what he died from. There was no mention of this woman. Bishop's diagnosis would have prevented her from using public bath or being treated in a regular hospital. As a result, the mercury with which she was treated slowed down the decomposition and turned her into a mummy. Roman sarcophagus Half a kilometer from the sea in the Gaza Strip, archaeologists discovered an ancient sarcophagus. The ancient Roman cemetery was found in 2022. Its area is 3,500 square meters. And for the entire period of excavations, French and Palestinian archaeologists managed to find 85 individual and collective burials. The sarcophagus was sent to the laboratory for further study. This will take at least two, three months. The good news is that it remained intact. Art artifacts and burials of the Roman, Byzantine and Canaanite eras have already been found in this region. The finds in these places are amazing. Last year, a Palestinian farmer discovered the head of a 4,500-year-old statue of the Canaanite goddess Anit, while another farmer found a Byzantine-era mosaic in his garden. But these finds are not as ancient as those that I will talk about later. Travel chests with books now any of us can store all our favorite books on a smartphone or in special ebooks. Previously, there was no such possibility, and there was a need to go on a trip with books. For this, people used a travel chest with books. Now around the world, there are only about 100 such chests left. In 2019, Oxford Bodleian Libraries purchased one from a private buyer. The case came from France and was made of wood and leather in the 1400s. It also had metal clasps and hand straps for carrying. Most of the surviving book chests date back to the 1500, making them among the oldest ever found. The most interesting find was a woodcut attached to the inside of the lid. It was a play called God the Father in Majesty, a draft from a liturgical book in Paris. Overall, the woodcut was incredibly rare. Not only has it been found in its original context and dated to the earliest attempts at printing in Europe, only four types are known to exist. 800-year-old mummy is someone's girlfriend. This creepy story took place in Peru, like many others associated with ancient mummies and terrible rites. 26-year-old Julio Cesar Bermejo sleeps in the same bed with the mummy Juanita, which he inherited from his father. Juanita has lived in this house for over 30 years, but the main disappointment of an older woman lover was awaiting for him further. It was not Juanita, but the real Juan. Quite by chance, the police approached the guy to conduct a routine inspection of things. Julio worked as a courier, and in his refrigerator bag, he carried an ancient mummy with him, claiming that it was was his girlfriend. He told the police that he loves her and cares for her, and also that she sleeps with him in the same bed. I probably won't say anything about the guy's mental health. Doctors will tell you about this after they conduct a medical examination. Until then, he will remain in custody. The guy claims that his father brought the mummy home 30 or 40 years ago because the museum did not accept it as a gift. According to the former courier, his family bought it for 2,000 Peruvian 
souls, at the time a huge amount. Specialists in antiquities have already managed to draw the first conclusions on the mummy. The pre-Hispanic relic is a mummified adult male. He lived presumably in the eastern part of Puno, a region in the Peruvian Andes, about 1,300 kilometers southeast of Lima. The man was about 45 years old. The guy said that he just decided to meet with his friends and took the mummy with him because he wanted to show off the girl to his friends. It is difficult to add something to the story, so I propose to move on to the next find of archaeologists. Flush toilet over 2,000 years old in official world history, it is believed that the first flush toilet was created in England in 1569 by John Harrington for his goddaughter, Queen Elizabeth I. However, a recent find in China wants to rewrite this historical fact. According to this find, the first toilet bowl with a flush appeared in China one and a half two thousand years ago. In addition to flushing, this toilet had a plumbing that led to a drain pit apparently located outside the palace. There is no doubt that this luxury item, created even before our era, was used by high-ranking residents of the palace. It is now a toilet in every home, but before, it was a privilege only for the elite. An ancient city on the territory of the modern Chinese city of Liang was discovered in the 1980s. From the moment of discovery to this day, massive excavations are on the way there. In 2012, two more castle complexes were found and in 2020, a third was found. At present, only platform foundations remain of the buildings. In addition, archaeologists have unearthed a large semicircular tile known as the Royal Gate Tile. It was found in the four corners of the foundation. The age of the toilet bowl is between 2200 and 2400 years old, which means that the toilet was created in the period from the Warren States to the beginning of the Han Dynasty. According to experts, the find is intriguing as, in fact, England is no longer the country where the toilet was created. We are talking about a flush toilet since the first stone toilets without a flush appeared 6,000 years ago. After discovering the toilet, archaeologists are eager to explore the surrounding soil near the pit. It, in their opinion, can tell about the diet and eating habits of ancient people in China. However, ancient theses have not yet been found. Tools of labor created before the advent of mankind a shocking find was discovered by archaeologists in Kenya. They found the oldest tools in the history of mankind. More precisely, they are older than the entire human race. The approximate age of artifacts is from 3 to 2.6 million years. They are older than the entire genus Homo, which appeared about 2.6 million years ago. Our species, Homo sapiens, is thought to have evolved about 200,000 years ago. So the creators of the found tools were not people and even direct antithesis series of people. Next to the tools were found the teeth of Paranthropus, hominides which are distant relatives of men but not ancestors. Previously, archaeologists had no evidence that these creatures could make tools. It was believed that they, that they were very stupid. Over several years of excavations at the Nyayanga site, Kenya has already found 330 artifacts, 1,776 animal bones, and two teeth of hominides. Archaeologists have found hippopotamus bones. This suggests that Paranthropes hunted large animals, but the meat was eaten raw because no traces of fire were found. It is amazing. We have many different events throughout our lives. We learn to walk, talk, get an education, work, create a family. And three million years ago, there were some humanoid creatures that could not even make fire. They lived on this planet like wild animals, and at the same time, they are considered our very distant relatives. Rate this video with your thumbs up or down and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!